G'day guys, welcome back to another video on the True Footy YouTube channel. Silly season is well and truly upon us. Um, usually, silly season would really only be limited to the weeks before the trade period and then of course the trade period itself. But now in this new player movement landscape, of course, trades, etc., can still occur until uh, I think Friday evening Melbourne time. Then of course, there's live trading to consider as well. So the advent of silly season in terms of trade rumors, etc., has continued well into November. So today what we're gonna discuss is a little bit more around the trade hypothetical of pick one involving um, obviously West Coast, North Melbourne, and to some extent, the Melbourne Football Club as well. So today's video is kind of more about um, just sort of discussing what has been said on a Fox footy podcast involving guys like Lee Montagna and Mick Ablett, particularly around the, the prospect of pick one being traded to North Melbourne from West Coast. And the reason I wanna talk about it, A, it's a slow news period, obviously. I'm aware I'm 100% contributing to Silly Season with the content that I make, but also this is probably the best discussion and at least the best trade hypothetical that I've heard. I'm not saying I'm necessarily satisfied that this is a good option for any of the clubs to go down, but Mick Ablett in this podcast did sort of concoct a bit of a trade hypothetical that in fairness, has probably been the best one suggested so far. So what we'll do is I'll kind of paraphrase what was said throughout the podcast, and then we'll go through what that trade hypothetical was. So the, it sort of starts off with um, Montagna and Mick Ablett sort of showing two opposing viewpoints on whether North Melbourne should trade for pick one at all. So on one hand, you had uh, Montagna who suggested, you know, as good as Harley Reid will be, if you go to the flip side and you're North Melbourne, he doesn't necessarily think they should be desperate to get pick one. And that's fair enough. I more or less agree with that. And from what I can gather in the comment section of these videos, North Melbourne fans more or less feel that way too. He says they're in great shape with getting picks two and three. Absolutely they are. And they're still going to get two absolute jets by his words. And they can build their future around and continue to build around the young crop of talent. They have reasonable comments. I'm just sort of mapping out his viewpoint. He says North shouldn't have to sell the farm to get pick one. They've made their offer. And now it's up to West Coast to decide whether that is enough. He says he thinks North Melbourne are in a strong position in this draft. That's obvious. They have the most draft points and by extension, the best draft hand with five picks in the first 18 of this draft as it currently stands. And his final comment is he would leave it at that offer for what North has previously offered, which was approximately 2, 15 and 17 for 1 and 23. And he says um, North Melbourne should say, this is our best offer. So it's up to you, West Coast, if you want that glut of picks, because he sincerely thinks that West Coast really need a, uh, a multitude of first round picks in this year's draft. So I think that's all reasonable. I, I'm of course not suggesting, and I have had said on this channel as well, if I was North, I wouldn't give up picks two and three. And this is one thing I probably not really accept is the, the he's almost trying to flip the power dynamic to suggest that it's West Coast who's in a desperate situation here to get more picks in the first round. Because while it would be nice to obviously accelerate the rebuild with more picks, and I have argued for the pros of that, it's not actually entirely necessary for West Coast to rebuild as fast as possible by sacrificing their draft position to get more first round picks. It's not necessarily a guaranteed course of action that will lead to success. So that's just one point I'd make is I don't think that approach will necessarily work in this scenario. But if he thinks North should keep the picks, fair enough. This is where Mick Ablett sort of chimes in with a completely opposite perspective and he sort of urges North Melbourne uh, that they need to sort of make a statement with this particular trade period in this draft scenario. So he says that North Melbourne know that they've got to find a way to get two picks inside the top 10 to satisfy West Coast. And he acknowledges that those two picks, you know, they can't be nine and 10. They've obviously got to be upper end of the top 10. He says, in saying this, I think the Kangaroos have a decision to make as well. It's time for them to draw a line in the sand and go really hard and say, we want Harley Reid. We know he's a generational talent, best player in the draft. He suggests that North Melbourne should probably pay overs to some extent to get him because at some stage that footy club, and I quote, has to draw a line in the sand and show the footy world and their supporters that they're fair dinkum and are going to go hard after what they want, which I found a very interesting take. Just as a side point here, I know sometimes I, I sort of pick out what you know journalists are saying and uh, etc. the draft the experts and I want to clarify, I'm always going for the ball, not the man. I have no issue with Michael Ablett or Sam McClure, but you know, part of my job, if you want to call it that here, is to discuss what's being said in the general AFL media and offer my own thoughts. 
But I feel like this one is a little bit more, you know, emotion grabbing rhetoric. I don't, I don't feel as though there's a strong case for North Melbourne to need to sell the farm to get Harley Reid. The idea that they need to make a statement and, and demonstrate to their supporters that they're serious about getting better. I don't know if necessarily trading, you know, picks two and three hypothetically. In fairness, he's not actually saying what North should offer, but offering something way over the top to get someone like Harley Reid. I don't know if that's necessarily the statement that needs to be made for North Melbourne fans to accept that their club is trying to get better. So I found it a strange comment. I'm not, I'm not too sure if it was just a kind of a case of trying to present both sides of an argument, but what would Harley Reid pre- represent to North Melbourne? Well, uh, I suppose, obviously, he's a generational talent and potentially, and I've made this point for West Coast as well, he could be sort of the case of, or the face of their marketing, so to speak, of their next rebuild, the next poster boy, that could really um, appeal to a club like North Melbourne. But that being said, there's still not really a lot of substance there, and uh, I didn't find it a completely compelling argument. You know, it wasn't so long ago that North Melbourne held firm on getting pick one. Um, You know, in 2021, there was a number of offers, very generous offers for pick one, which eventually became Jason Horn Francis, and North Melbourne stuck to their guns. They took the best player in the draft, and it obviously didn't end well for them. But that's not to say that it would happen again with Harley Reid, but for for as much talk as there is about Harley Reid potentially leaving West Coast to go home to Victoria to play for a big club, North Melbourne is not completely immune from that exact same instance happening again. If Harley Reid leaves Western Australia after, say, two years, four years, six years, whatever it is, to go play in Victoria... It wouldn't be because he's homesick, because he's from, you know, regional country Victoria. He'd probably be tempted to play for a big club, potentially play on the MCG all the time. Uh, you know, he's a, he's a big Geelong fan from what I can understand. Maybe he ends up at Geelong. So North Melbourne would have all those considerations too. And so that's kind of an argument for them to not really go that hard for him. But anyway, that's kind of just uh, laying the foundation for what uh, Mick Ablett then suggests, which I think is actually, it may not be like an airtight absolute uh, trade scenario, but as I said, this is probably the most realistic one I've seen, and he suggests that Melbourne could potentially be a vital cog in unlocking a trade for pick one and Harley Reid to get to North Melbourne. So he points out that the D's obviously hold pick six and 11 in this year's draft. So we asked the hypothetical question of would the Demons be willing to make an offer for uh, pick six and 11 going to North Melbourne and pick two making its way to Melbourne. That would allow North Melbourne then to trade picks three and six to West Coast for a deal for pick one. So to clarify exactly what happens, Melbourne gives away six and 11 and they get pick two out of this deal. North Melbourne do lose pick two and three, but they get their pick one and they get pick 11 in exchange for that. West Coast get picks three and six in exchange for pick one. So let's break it down by club, how good this actually looks for each team. So in this scenario, Melbourne would take picks two and 42 to this year's draft. Now. My first initial instinct is that this is a big sacrifice to make to give up their second first round selection simply for a chance at McKercher or Dersma potentially. There is, there's been some suggestion that they're pretty damn keen on Zane Dersma. Uh, that being said, you know, that being said, in my last Phantom draft, I had them taking, I think it was Riley Sanders and Connor O'Sullivan. So two pretty quality uh, top end talents that you would argue. Is the prospect of someone like a Zane Dersma on his own enough for Melbourne to be happy enough to not take their second pick or have their second pick in the 40s? I'd question that. There's also the point that I've made before, which is Melbourne want Harley Reid as well. So this is predicated on Melbourne being willing to uh, negotiate and cooperate with a deal that gets Harley Reid to a different club. And I think that might be a little bit rich for them. But we'll talk about North Melbourne now. This one actually works okay from a a value point of view. So they do lose two and three, which they don't want to lose, but they do get their man in Harley Reid, who is seen as a clear jump in talent between McKercher, Curtin, Dersma, whoever you rate as the next best talents. And uh, instead of just losing two and three, they do get a mid first round selection back in pick 11. So this would allow them the opportunity potentially to get a Harley Reid and to add someone like a maybe a Connor O'Sullivan in the middle of the first round anyway. So getting someone sort of to balance out their list, we know that they need a key back. This one is actually not bad from a value proposition. Then there's the West Coast perspective and say, you know, picks three and six for pick one. On value, that's probably okay. You know, those are two top six picks. But this is why I think West Coast would also balk at this deal because three and six does not give West Coast any real certainty of getting the targets that they're likely to have in this year's draft. Because with picks three and six, 
There is a distinct possibility that West Coast would miss out, of course, on Harley Reid, but also on two other prospects that they reportedly like in McKercher and Daniel Curtin. There's a likely scenario that they miss out on all of those. Would they take Curtin at pick three? I'm skeptical that they would, but potentially they could pair pick three Daniel Curtin and then at pick six take a Riley Sanders midfield talent anyway. So on value, it's about right, but I think what West Coast want in a deal that uh, where they potentially get rid of Harley Reid is some certainty that they end up with exactly the players that they want to end up with. So like I said, it's a, it's a hypothetical and it's, it's probably the best attempt I've seen at one. But as time goes by, it does seem less and less likely that any club's going to be completely willing to come to the party to make a deal where Harley Reid gets to North Melbourne. There's also the, the other thing to consider that West Coast did reject Hawthorne's pick four in a future first, which is arguably just as good a deal as this one offered in this scenario. In other draft uh, or draft pick trading news, uh, there's talk that Gold Coast probably don't have quite enough picks to match all the academy picks they potentially will have. So it's all, it's all predicated on exactly where the three talents of Walter and uh, Reed and Rogers fall in terms of how high those bids come. So there's a suggestion, long story short, that Gold Coast may be willing to trade some of the picks that they have with other clubs to try and move up in terms of total points, which presents some opportunities for other clubs to potentially get extra picks. So just as a West Coast Eagles aside, um, almost like a mini Eagles corner in this video, uh, the Eagles were listed as one club that is also trying to get another pick in the top 25 of this year's draft. How they do it, I don't know if it's possible with the Gold Coast Suns because the Eagles hold picks 37 and pick 58. And if they were going to package those up and trade for, say, pick 24, which is a pick obviously in the top 25, it's actually less points for Gold Coast. So that probably wouldn't work, but I did think it was an interesting tidbit. The West Coast are actively trying to get another pick in the top 25. We could see live trades of future selections. Maybe West Coast give up a future second live on the night to try and get another pick if there's someone they really fancy. And again, just one more Eagles tidbit. Check out this photo of Ruben Jinby at training. Look at that. The guy is just jacked. This is insane. The kid's just turned 19. He's way bigger than I'll ever be. Anyway, that was just a little tidbit for you Eagles fans to get excited about. But broadly speaking, guys, let me know in the comments what you think of this trade hypothetical. Who do you agree with more out of Montaigne and Nick Ablett? It's funny to think that uh, West Coast and North Melbourne fans, from what I can tell, the vast majority of people just don't want a trade to happen. And uh, it's interesting. I don't remember too many trade hypotheticals where that's been the case, where everyone's just like, no, no, please. But neutrals, obviously, uh, let me know in the comments your thoughts as well. It's an interesting time. And uh, I love silly season. It gives me some content to make. I love talking about football and stupid trade hypotheticals. And that's another thing. If you know of any other, you know, potential trade uh, trades for pick swaps coming up in this draft that I might have missed, let me know in the comments and I'll investigate them. But thanks for watching, guys. And for now, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.